I now know Washington probably better than anybody. I know the good ones and the bad ones, and we will have really great, strong people. I already know who they are, but we will have really great, strong people. Okay, your Vice President Mike Pence is running against you. Yeah. Your Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr, uh, says you shouldn't be President again. I uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, bar a, a gutless pig. Uh, your second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House chief of staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, a born loser. You called your first secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, dumb as a rock. And your first defense secretary, James Mattis, the world's most overrated general. You called your White House press secretary, Kayla Kennedy, milk toast, and multiple times you've referred to your transportation secretary, Elaine Chao, as Mitch McConnell's China loving wife. So, why did you hire all of them in the first place? I know the best people. <laughs> This is Donald Trump immediately regretting his decision to sit down with Fox News' Brett Baer because Brett Baer came to play. I have to admit, this is the first time that I have ever in my life laughed this hard at a Fox News interview. This has got to be one of the craziest interviews I've ever seen. And I know, I know, I say that every single time that fat orange loser is in a video. But this time, he's gone from unhinged to completely unhinged. And credit where credit is due. Brett did a great job in this interview. Not... 100% to my liking, but he did a lot better than most Fox people would have done in this position. Like here, where I think he does a great job right from the get-go, reminding Fox viewers what Donald Trump's remarks were when he was talking about, you know, enforcing the laws regarding classified documents. This is what you said in 2016 about handling this. In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. We also need to fight this battle by collecting intelligence and then protecting, protecting our classified secrets. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. And right after that, Brett wasted no time going straight at Donald Trump, asking him why, after all that, he would have such highly classified national defense material, including documents that contain our defense strategies or attack plans for, you know, say, Iran. And what's even wilder is that Donald Trump's response does not include a denial about having these documents. And you can tell that Bill Barr making the rounds this week and absolutely destroying every one of Donald Trump's talking points is getting at Donald Trump because why in the hell would a question like this lead to a response that had anything to do with Bill Barr at all? Why did you have this very sensitive national security defense documents, like the war plans for a strike on Iran? So like every other president, I take things out. And in my case, I took it out pretty much in a hurry, but people packed it up and we, we left. And I had clothing in there. I had all sorts of personal items in there, much, much stuff. And by the way, when Bill Barr, who's, you know, a coward, Bill Barr was a coward. Bill Barr didn't do what he was supposed to do. I fired him, and he has great hatred, and that's okay, because some people do. He and some people resigned. love me very much. He didn't resign. I, w I asked him, give me a letter immediately. So why did you have such highly classified national defense material? Because Bill Barr's a coward, obviously. <laughs> Here's the orange blob sounded like an absolute buffoon saying the only way that Nara could possibly get these records back is if they said please, please, please like they were down on their hands and knees in front of Donald Trump. But not before Brett Baer correctly pushes back and points out that Nara did ask for these documents back. The only way Nara could ever get this stuff, this back, would be please, 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 could we have it back? And they please. asked for that. Because they have no, we they were did talking. Ask for it. No, and they said, I gave can you give some, the documents back? And we were talking. And then they said, they went to DOJ to subpoena you to get them Which back. they've never done before. Right. And, and but why fairness, not just hand them over then? Because I had boxes. I want to go through the boxes and get all my personal things out. I don't want to hand that over to Nara yet. 
And I was very busy, as you've sort of seen. I mean, we've all been there, right, guys? I mean, who hasn't been too busy to take their golf spikes out of the classified documents box? I mean, who can't relate to the fact of being too busy to take Shaq's shoe out of our fucking war plans? And God forbid you sit down for two friggin' seconds and take your 7X polo shirts out of our nuclear secrets. And this next clip is just absolutely remarkable to me. I mean, when pressed by Brett Baer on why Donald Trump would move boxes before the lawyers were coming to inspect those boxes, not only does Donald Trump not deny obstructing justice, but he says it's because he hadn't had a chance to go through the boxes yet. And he couldn't possibly hand over the boxes full of our nation's deepest secrets because, you know, his golf shirts, or more likely, a pair of his soiled friggin' trousers. And again, Brett presses Donald Trump on the Iran war plans document, and Donald Trump's response is, Not that I know of. Yeah, but I've according very, to the indictment, you then tell this aide to move to other locations after telling your lawyers to say you'd fully complied with the subpoena when you hadn't. But before I send boxes over, I have to take all of my things out. So, yes. These boxes were interspersed with all sorts of things. Uh, golf shirts, clothing, pants, shoes. There were many things. Oh, I would say on, much, plans? much more. Not that I know of, but not that I know of. And here's Brett, I think, doing an okay job of pushing back against Donald Trump using his whataboutisms again, going after Biden. These are super sensitive national security oh, documents. Sure. I'm sure, all right, so here's, I'm sure you'll see is, real super sensitive that Biden has, because Biden is, has far more than anybody's ever kept. And he turned them over when asked. No, he but, didn't. But he that's, still that's hasn't he given the 1,850 boxes that's stored at the University of Delaware. In fact, they're fighting them in court, right. and they're fighting them. And but he the opened boxes, up for them to look at it. Excuse me. This next clip is just utter nonsense from Donald Trump. This has to be one of the most incoherent, most nonsensical responses I've ever heard from this moron. Here he is being directly challenged by Brett Baer over the recordings they have of him at Bedminster where he directly admits to not having declassified any of this material. And not only that, that the material that they were looking at was a secret, top secret, to this day. According to the indictment, you were here at Bedminster on July 21st, 2021, after you're no longer president, and you were recorded saying that you had a document detailing a plan of attack on another country that was prepared by the US military for you when you were president. The Iran attack plan, you remember that? Ready? You were recorded. It wasn't a document. Oh, this is specifically a quote. You're quoted and, on the uh, recording no, and, saying the document was secret, adding that you could have declassified it while you were president, but quote, now I can't. You know this is still secret, highly confidential. And the indictment cites the recording and the testimony from people in the room saying you showed it to people there that day. So you say on this, on tape. It says just the opposite. That you can't and, declassify and it, so you. why have it? What, what I said, is. when I said that I couldn't declassify it now, that's because I wasn't president. I, I never made any bones about that. When I'm not president, I can't declassify. And that's what you said. You didn't I said declassify that. it. I said no, no. What? He said I couldn't declassify could it. That wasn't a document, it. Brett. There was no document. That was a massive amount of papers and everything else. Papers. Also known as documents, Donnie. Holy shit. Talking about Iran and other things, Iran and other things, and it may have been held up or may not, but that was not a document. I didn't have a document per se. So a document with stuff having to do with Iran that may or may not have been held up, but not a document having to do with Iran that you somehow showed people that shouldn't see it. Yeah, Donald Trump is just too stupid to realize that Brett Baer is setting forth the argument set forth in the indictment against Donald Trump, and Donald Trump just agrees with him. And then somehow goes on to claim that he never saw a document in all his time in the White House from General Mark Milley. The These suggestion was people. that you wanted this as evidence that the military, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Milley, had preemptively sent you plans for a possible attack on Iran and that you didn't order that to happen. That's the suggestion. I never ordered it to happen, no. But no. that's why you wanted the document. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a document from Milley. Milley, frankly, was incompetent. The last one I'd want to attack with as my leader would be Milley. That I can tell you. And here's what sounds like to me, Donald Trump actually claiming that he didn't want any of these documents, but only held on to them because the FBI raided his Mar-a-Lago hotel more than a year after Nara asked for these documents back originally. There are 31 documents listed. Nuclear capabilities of foreign countries, related to military capabilities of foreign countries, intelligence briefings on foreign countries. Why do you want to hold on to those documents after you're president? I don't say I do. You just didn't we know what was in the boxes? 
with NARA giving them back. All of a sudden, we've got raided, which is a violation of my, you know, Fourth Amendment rights. They raided my home, and they came in and they took things. We were discussing this with NARA. Look at Obama. Look at Clinton. You know, Clinton took documents. Clinton took tapes in his socks. Interviews and you know with what his happened? story. The Clinton socks case. I do know it well. And it basically said the president has every right to keep whatever he wants, and that includes me. And here's what has to be a delusional Donald Trump strangely claiming that his documents case has already been fought. And the question this is whether this is not a criminal case. Let highly classified government national security documents fall in that I category, think... and that battle is going to be fought in the courts. It's already been fought. Well, if that were the case, I'm pretty sure you'd know because you'd have pinstripes on and metal bars in front of you, big guy. This next clip just perfectly encapsulates everything about Donald Trump. His inability to answer a straight question, his immaturity and pettiness, his selfish, egotistical, self-centered nature, his inability to stay on topic, his inability to articulate policies. I mean, this is Brett Baer asking him what Donald Trump can do to win back independent, suburban women voters. And Donald Trump's response was, the 2020 election was stolen. I shit you not. More independent voters watch Fox News than any other TV source. A lot less than used to watch it. They do watch. Those voters but usually less, they usually make up all the difference in the election. And so to the female independent voter in the suburbs who struggled with family mm -hmm. financing because of inflation, she's now against Biden, disapproves of Biden, but wasn't with you in 2020 and so far is a hard no for you in 2024. But what do you say to that? At the right polls, what, what do you say to that female independent suburban voter who feels that way to win her back? First of all, I won in 2020 by a lot. OK. You Let's know, get that straight. I won in 2020. You know that this, and if you look at all of the tapes, if the you look at shows. everything that you want to look at, you take a look at Truth to Vote, where they have people stuffing the ballot boxes on tapes, or President, let's go to recent. Well, wait a minute. Let's go to recent. FBI Twitter. Let's go to recent. The 51 agents. All corrupt stuff, Brad. Understand about the all, Hunter Biden. Well, no, but that's cheating things, on the election. But, but that's cheating on the election. You lost the 2020 election. Uh, Brad. Uh, you take a look at all of the stuff ballots. You take a look at all of the things, including things like the 51 intelligence there were, agents. There were recounts in all of the swing states. There was not significant right, widespread We're trying fraud. to get recounts, real recounts, not just numbers of votes Widespread cast. corruption. There was not a sense of that. There were lawsuits, more than 50 of them, by your lawyers, some in front of Freddy, judges, Freddy. judges that you appointed. Look at Wisconsin. That came out with Wisconsin no evidence. Is, Fred, Wisconsin has practically admitted it was rigged. Others states are doing the same right now, and it's continuing. on. There have been reviews it was a of every election. potential case of voter fraud in six battleground states, and they found fewer than 475 cases. You know why? Because they didn't effective. look at the right things. Okay. Are you going they to were be... Counting, they were counting ballots, not the authenticity of the ballot. The ballots were fake ballots. You had, this asked, was a very rigged Are election. you going to go, this is how you're going to tell that independent suburban no, woman no, voter no. to vote we're for you? Off <laughs> And we know it's not even just the documents case that Donald Trump has absolutely lost his mind over. I mean, here he is claiming that the reason he got along with Volodymyr Zelensky is because Zelensky was the one that came up with the impeachment hoax number one. I got along with Zelensky very well because he came up with the impeachment hoax number one. And for those of you who still may think that this man isn't a Russian puppet, here he is flat out denying to say whether or not Putin was wrong for invading Ukraine. Is he wrong to invade Ukraine? He wouldn't have done it if, if it were me. But he it was did the wrong that move. after I left. I thought he might do it. Look, I talked to him. I said, if you do it, there's going to be hell to pay. It's going to be a catastrophe. Don't do it. He said, no, 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 you won't do that. I told him I was going to do something. He said, no, 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 you will not do that. I said, I will, Vladimir, I will do it. I'm going to do it. You're and you know what? what? He didn't believe me. Whatever. What? It was pretty bad. And he didn't believe me at all, except for maybe 10%. And 10% is all you needed. I don't know. It sounds an awful lot like his fake Abdul story to me. I said, don't do it, Abdul. I said, don't do it. And here's the fat orange slob reluctantly admitting that Ukraine is its own country while immediately following that up with it used to be part of Russia and Putin liked it better that way. He also once again fails to have the backbone to answer the question of whether or not he would give Putin Crimea or not. But you believe but Ukraine I will tell is a separate you. country from Russia? 
Yeah, right. It's a separate country, so but at one Putin, point it wasn't a separate right. country. Should Putin and, have and Crimea? Putin liked it that way. Is better. that part of the deal? Is should Putin get Crimea? Well, is well, that right, what you? Right now, I don't talk about those deals because it really would impede a negotiation. But I'm telling you, within 24 hours, that's what I did. I became very rich by doing deals, very rich. And you know what? Much more so than people even understand. And that's what I do. I would have a deal done in 24 hours from the time we started. All right, you hollow-headed shell of a man. Please tell us this ingenious idea you have of ending this brutal invasion that Russia has forced upon Ukraine in less than 24 hours. The world is just dying to hear this incredible plan you have that only the mind of Donald J. Trump could come up with. And I would tell Zelensky something, and I would tell Putin something, and I'd get him into a room, and I'd tell him again and again. <laughs> I would have a deal done very quickly, because look, Ukraine has been wiped out. All right, so then why don't you do me a favor, you demented bastard? Why don't you fly over to Ukraine and you tell the people, the brave men and women, the men and women of the armed forces of Ukraine, that Ukraine has already been wiped out, and then you tell me how that goes for you. Because the last time I checked, Ukraine still has more men in reserve than they do on the front lines, while Russia is losing thousands every day. As I can see it, Russia doesn't have soldiers, they have bodies. Ukraine actually has soldiers, men and women willing to fight, willing to die for their homeland. But this interview was wild, guys. I hope he does more of these, because every time he opens his fat fucking mouth, the more trouble that man gets into. So keep sitting down with these people, keep opening your flapper, keep talking about it. Anybody that's been following the Midas Touch Network close enough knows that the DOJ and Jack Smith pretty much has Donald Trump dead to rights already, but this only reinforces their case. If you guys like the content, like what you saw, feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, tell them Boston Brian sent you. It's all free. What we have to do is get this message out. Let more people see this madman for what he is and let this guy know that he's not going to get away with it this time. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.